Welcome back for episode 30 of the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Mitchell Gon- Gonzer. Mitchell, thanks for coming on. Danny, thanks for having me. Uh, beyond just being an old rival, Mitchell is a star from Milton Academy Football and Medfield High, where he won team MVP honors at Medfield in 2017, and at his last two years at Milton Academy, he was a team MVP uh, honors as well. Uh, he was all scholastic twice with the Globe, something like yeah. that. And now he's at Harvard Football where he's been moved from safety to outside linebacker. Is that right? Uh, yeah, um, very uh, similar roles. Though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what does it take to play Harvard Football? Uh, I mean, it takes, uh, takes a, a lot of er- like everything. Um, you got to be like a Swiss Army knife in a, a lot more than one category. Um, attention to detail. Um, logistics, um, sort of just like you know the whole, the whole thing, the whole shebang. Yeah. Um, but honestly, like some of the biggest things are just like going to bed on time, drinking enough water, eating right. Um, you know, you know, just sort of like keeping up with what's going on in our world today. Just being an informed citizen. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Being a nice guy, like <laughs> a nice guy, you know, yeah. it's it, it not too it, nice, hopefully. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, I mean that's that's different. When you step yeah. in between the lines, you have no friends. One one cool thing I read about you, um, it was in a Patriot Ledger article, was that your coach said you could have played ACC or Big Ten, you could play <laughs> Power Five football, but you chose Harvard. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I had talks of uh, going to bigger schools. Um, I mean, they never kind of you know followed through. Um, sort of, you know, fell through the seams, if you will. Um, but I, I definitely uh, had a crazy story about uh, Coach Harbaugh from Michigan. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was in the, the dorm one day at Milton um, my senior year, you know, right after the season. And I, uh, you know, I wasn't allowed to go to basketball practice yet. So, uh, you know, I was, I was in my dorm, like, after classes on Friday. And... Uh, you know, one of the football coaches called me down in the office, um, and you know, like I opened the door and like Harbo and Donnie Brown are <laughs> oh in the coach's office, and uh, you know, I I'd never, you know, personally seen them. Um, they've been recruiting my teammate Kalel for God knows how long, like yeah. t- since like eighth grade or whatever it was. Um, so yeah, it was just that was probably my my craziest moment. I was like, wow, like. Yeah, you're the guy from TV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did Harbaugh say to you? Um, he's he started talking to me. He uh, he they were looking for a, a safety. Um, because I'm pretty sure they had someone, um, decommit and go somewhere else oh, or yeah. something like that. Um, so a spot opened up, but uh, unfortunately it was a it was a walk on spot. Um, and they do this thing called a maze year. Um, so you'd go. You know, you do your first year as like a walk on. Mm-hmm. You have to pay like full tuition or whatever you you get off. Um, and then like hopefully you'd be in scholarship for your sophomore yeah. through um, the rest of your your time there. Um, but I mean, that that was kind of like you know they never actually you know they put the offer on the table without actually putting the offer on the table. Right. Um, so um, because they they like wanted. To, you to like sort of, you know, jump to them late as like sort of a last resort type right. of thing, but I I thought it was I don't know nothing was kind of guaranteed there. Um, there's really nothing to fall back on. Right, and so what was the process like with Harvard? Um, so for me, um, I'm I'm a little different from the rest of the crowd. Um, so a lot of people do regular decision. Um, so they 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 uh submit their application uh, in, you know, like September of their senior year. And then they'll get like a likely letter in January or something like that. Yeah. Um, so they actually never actually get into the school until May. So that's that's a pretty big misconception. So, yeah. um, so for me, I wasn't a regular decision guy or an early action. That's that's what I meant to say. So early action, they, you know, September, all that. They yeah. send it in, you're in Jan, like in January, you have to like the letter. So for me, I didn't have my standardized testing score. Um, I didn't get mine until December of my senior year. Wow. So I, the day, the night of Christmas, I got my ACT score uh, back because I took one in December. Um, 
and I, I ended up getting the score I needed. And Because yeah. uh, for being recruited to Ivy Leagues, for people that don't know, there's certain wrong certain levels you have to hit to be recruited, right? Yeah, so there's a, there's a band system. Um, there's four bands. Um, and essentially, so like a third of your... Uh, your a third of your score is your GPA, and two thirds of your score is a standardized testing score. Wow! So a lot of people don't know that as well. Yeah. Um. So as far as like, I feel like a lot of people are aren't informed about yeah. sort of how that works. But uh, so a certain number have to be from each band. Yeah. Yes. E- exactly. So like, uh, band four is the highest for football. That is, it's a little different than other sports. Mm-hmm. Um. So band four is like you know. Perfect, perfect SAT. You know, you got your sixteen hundred yeah. and your your four point and above. Yeah. If depending on your high school, um, so yeah, I mean, there's you could take as many of those kids as you want. It's just like the sort of in between people, sort of with like three sixes and like thirteen hundreds, just yeah. like sort of just like lower, but like still, still like really still, still really yeah, yeah, still really good. Um, so they only have like uh, a few spots for like uh, kids with like, let's say the, the bar is probably like a 24 ACT and like a three, three, four, three, five, mm. that sort of combination. So um, yeah, there's definitely a, a wide variety of recruits. Yeah. So uh, Christmas, you get this ACT back, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then what happens after that? Um, I, I, I texted uh, Coach Largy, um, the guy who had been recruiting me for... Um, since my junior year at Medfield. Um, so he was actually the first coach to ever recruit me. Um, and then, like, when I told him I was staying back a year and going to Milton, he was, you know, he's thrilled. Um, so I just, you know, stayed in close contact with him. And then, like, he he didn't really talk to me throughout my senior year fall because, like, I knew he would just be, like, watching in the distance, yeah. in the shadows, you know. In the trees. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean... I had a pretty good senior year, um, but I mean, I mean, none of that means anything now. But uh, 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 I lost my train of thought. The uh, yeah, you're talking to him. Uh, you've gotten your score back. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, he offered me the like as soon as he saw my my uh, my score, uh, I sent him like how to like officially send it to him like yeah. that way. Um, he offered me like the the day of or like the next day, and then what he. What was like, that moment like when you got the official offer? Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, they were like hesitating on uh, bringing me to campus and like showing me around um, because like they they fill up their spots. Oh, yeah. um, so like I was a band one before that score, and then I got bumped to a band three. Wow! So they just I don't know. They took me immediately. Um, so yeah, I mean that was it was. It was crazy. Um, he offered me on spot, like, and uh, he's like, "Are you gonna commit?" <laughs> it's just like, uh, like, I, I really like want like a day, <laughs> or, like <laughs> yeah, some, some time, hours. you know. Like, uh, I I hadn't really talked to my parents at all about it because like it was just so like spontaneous. Wow. Um, what was their reaction? Um. So like, they like they knew like I was talking to coach for a while. Like, they had like that. So. A lot of times, uh, the coaches who are really serious about you, you know, your senior year winter for football guys, um, is they'll have, like, a coach come visit, do a home visit with you uh, and your family. So, like, I don't know, Coach Larky, like, went to, you know, have dinner at my house. Sadly, I wasn't there because I was at school. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, I had, like, a dinner with my parents, um, stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, since, like, I met Coach Larky, and like he started recruiting me, like at Medfield, like yeah. you know, I kind of just knew he was, you know, the right coach for me. Yeah. Um, and he was a former player there too, so. Yeah. Um, it kind of means a lot. Right, and and coming down to the final decision, um, I know there's sort of obvious reasons why someone might choose Harvard, but still, a guy like you, a good player with good scores, there's a lot of places you could play. Obviously, why did you choose Harvard ultimately? Um, I mean. Like the first reason, and it's kind of like the the biggest is it's I mean it's like my hometown school like it's right in yeah. Boston, um, thirty minutes from my house. Mm-hmm. Um, you know if I like I'm kind of like a homebody, so I mean I like to you know be at home with my family. Yeah. Um, you know not go go like too far. Um, so that was kind of like one of the biggest things for me. 
Um, and then like high academics, high athletics. I mean, like the Ivy League, they produce you know some like professional yeah. players too. Um, yeah, Eli uh, Dershowitz from Sherburne is fencing in the Olympics next week. Yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, Harvard's got legit sports. Yeah, Eli and I. Uh, we work out at uh, Kingsbury Club down the road. Oh, yeah. um, so I first met him uh, a few years back, but uh, you know he's a. Uh, it's from from what it seems like I I know him uh, just a little bit. Um, yeah. I think I have his number in my phone. Oh yeah. So like I'm kind of on like the yeah. you know like the, no, the <laughs> yeah. number, but I mean he's. Send him a congrats if he wins. A yeah, he, he's 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 an Olympian, so I don't know if he's you know. <laughs> he's getting a lot of texts, bro. Yeah, I know he's probably getting hit up like left and right. A, so. a, a friend of mine, Dan Carroll, who threw at Mississippi State, is like really good friends with Eli. Mm-hmm. So I DM'd him. I was like, Hey, Eli, I'm friends with Dan Carroll. You know, you want to come on the show? Never heard back from him. You know, but. He's a gentleman of Harvard, so I'm sure he's got a lot of different things. Do you have a favorite Harvard movie? Uh, I do. Um, I would say, I mean, it's kind of like a close tie, mm-hmm. to be honest. But uh, definitely uh, The Town. Um, oh, yeah. It's a good one. And then the, uh, you know, the infamous, uh, you know. Good Will Hunting? Good Will Hunting. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, slash, know, it's like those two are sort of yeah. like the, the pinnacle in have, my, in my have mind. Have you ever seen The Social Network? Um, I have. Have yeah. you thought about starting your own app or social media? Uh, so I'm actually kind of um, on like the end or other end of things. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't say like I'm anti-social media. Oh, really? But uh, I mean, I would say that I have mixed feelings about it. Yes. Um. Because, I mean, you know, with great power comes, you know, great responsibility. Right. So, like, you're just sort of magnified even more. Like, yeah. uh, so, you know, just you sort of have to always know that you have, like, a target on your back. Yeah. No matter where you're going, who you're yeah. with, you know, who you're talking to. So, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, that's, that's fine. <laughs> I was going to say, this is a question I've been wanting to ask. Who do you hate more, Dover Sherman football or Yale football? Uh, so <laughs> you kind of miss one, but, uh, Nobles, when I was at Milton, oh, that was yeah. a pretty, pretty strong rivalry. Um, yeah, they, uh, let's just say they didn't really like me. Yeah, why not? Uh, I mean, you know, Is like, you good? it's, it's, <laughs> no, nah, I mean, it, I, I think it's more than that. Um, you know, football's a game within a game for sure. Mm. Um, you know, it's a game of inches, like. You know, a lot of things go into it that a lot of people don't see on the field. Yeah. Uh, do you hate Yale football? Uh, I mean, I, I I don't I don't speak I don't speak that college like it's just sort of like the the team below us you know like the, <laughs> the team down there in uh, Connecticut you know we don't really like to speak of them. Okay. Um, yeah. They just got a uh, a former Notre Dame recruit. I don't know if you know Jay Brunel. Oh yes, I've heard that. But uh, he he yeah he just transferred there. Um, he was getting looked at. I think the first school to offer him was Harvard too. Okay. So um, yeah, so now we're we'll playing him. There's is a, he a friend or is there bad blood there? Um, so he actually played my brother in eighth grade. He played for the Worcester Cowboys. Back okay. when my brother played for uh, Walpole AYF. Yeah. So in like the state semifinal or something yeah. like that. So we actually played in football. You yeah. played for Walpole, I played for DS. Yeah. And I think I remember you guys rolled over us every time. <laughs> yeah, bad. so... Um, you guys had huge line it. That's all I remember. I don't know huge. if you... I don't know if you remember 7th grade Walpole. Um, like, when you, if you guys played Walpole in okay, your 7th yeah. grade year. And they, uh, they ran this, you know, a interesting offense, to say the least. Yeah. Um, like where like the center would roll the ball back to you know like a fullback esque person yeah you know it'd be like three or three yards I remember weird motions and yeah stuff like that's that. exactly yeah. quarterback doing like yeah that's exactly what it was so they didn't actually have a quarterback that you know the center would just roll the ball like to like <laughs> um, a kid I used to play with Terrell Wiggins um, and you know like he would essentially like do everything for them. Yeah. But like uh, eighth grade, yeah, Coach Conrad, Bobby Conrad. Yeah. Um, DC. Conrad's oh, restaurant owner. Um, if you yeah. guys love Shout it. Shout out Conrad's. Yeah. You go see my sister and little brother work. Sister's working more hours than Johnny. Yeah, uh, definitely. I try to go get the steak tips. Um, definitely a first ballot Hall of Fame. Um, oh yeah. But uh, 
But yeah, so he, Coach Conrad, coached us in eighth grade. Um, Crabtree was on our team. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, he, his dad coached as well. So we had a pretty good squad. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we that that year we had a uh, an undefeated season um, until the last game. So we were uh, in the New England semi or the New England finals. Uh, so you have like the state championship game, whatever, and then you have like the, or you have the um, so there's two leagues. It's like the Western Mass okay, like yeah. uh, team, and then there's like the Bay State. We were in the Bay State. Yes, yeah, so we were in the Bay State, and uh, I, f- I forget the like the you know exact name for the conference or whatever. So we played Shrewsbury. Um, and the state semifinal game um, after we won our Bay State Conference. Yeah. Um, uh, and then after that, after that, we uh, we played this. So then we played. Uh, so I think no, I think that was a state game. And then uh, our our New England final game because I think there's only one of them. Uh, I don't know. There's two. I'm I'm, I'm actually uh, I'm I don't know why I'm all over the place, but uh. So, this, the New England semifinal game, we actually played the number two team in the country, um, New Britain, Connecticut, um, and uh, I mean, like, it's not like a city. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's we. So in seventh grade, I played uh, the Hartford Hurricanes, and they were like ranked in Pop Warner, mm-hmm. um, and you know we got shellacked. Like I think we lost like thirty-five to seven. Um, yeah, so like it was. But anyways, like those Connecticut teams that we ended up playing, like you know, they were like years be like beyond our our play. Like yeah. it was crazy. Like you know, in eighth grade, like the like the the captains of the New Britain, you know, number two team in the country, all of them had beards and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, so I mean, it's definitely a, a level up from so surrounding towns, if you yeah. will. What was crazy is so DS didn't really have a robust. Um, football, youth football program, so uh, my dad wanted his son to be able to play football, so he guys, you know, sort of built up the program a little bit, but there wasn't exactly a TVL or one network, because a lot of TVL times did pop one or not American Youth Football, but the closest one was the Bay State League, so we played in the Bay State League, and it was really rough, you know, Walpole, Framingham, these big uh, towns and cities, and so we got slapped around. But then we have like a close game with Natick. We almost beat them. Weymouth, we almost beat them. Um, and I think we went like, we had like no wins, eighth grade. Totally. But then, and we were down on a squad of like 16 guys. Oh, I think you were we, talking about this. And yeah. then like high school rolled around. High school know, rolls around. The tables we're playing, turned. We're playing like teams like Bellingham and Ashland and Medway. And I don't know what they were, what their youth football program looked like, but we went from playing you guys and Framingham and cities and stuff to play in these small towns around here, and we were just slapping them all around. It was great. Freshman football was great. And I think that's part of what, you know, I think Coach Ryan was a big part of turning the program around, but I do think there's a generation of DS football players that grew up playing the Bay State League, and I think that's part of why it went from a losing program to one that has consistently, you know, one to three losses, you know, good teams. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, what was the level? Did you experience that at all? Going because you were same thing. You were playing Bay State, and then you're in TVL. You you were at Medfield. People that don't know. Um. Yeah. So as far as like the TVL goes, um. So like, TVL like our high school Medfield High like we weren't freshmen. Like, we're not allowed to play varsity, like by any means necessary. Like I don't I don't know what it was, but like. They wouldn't let, you know, maybe at, like, the end of the year, like, I saw some time, like, you know, yeah. on the field, like, for getting, like, blown out or something like you that. Say, you think at least you would get some special teams in? Or? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I, I really wish I could have had that year back, to be honest. I really wish that we had the opportunity to play because I could definitely play with those kids. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, I was kind of, like, a little frustrated that I didn't, I didn't get to play. You know, I, had, I played freshman for, like, the first few games, and it's just, like – like it was just wasn't the right crowd yeah. if you know what I mean like I don't know the, the speed of the game was slow like mm-hmm. I feel like the guy next to me just like wasn't ready for you know sort of like the moment I don't yeah. know so I mean it's like I was I'm, I'm still kind of mad about that in the back of my mind but it, um, wow yeah but I mean it is what it is um, 
uh, just like you know, like once again, like I don't really like sitting on the sidelines, you know, watching like us yeah. lose, and like you know, like when you feel when you, like, could do when you feel like you can make an impact. So. How big would you have been your freshman year? Um, so, uh, I mean, I was probably like a few inches. I mean, right now, I mean, I'm like around, I'm like a six one two twenty, um, and back in freshman year, I was probably like, you know five ten one eighty. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you could have played varsity football. So, I mean, I mean, I wasn't... I, mean, I might even have been heavier, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I got the opportunity to sophomore year. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I was just kind of like... Yeah. I was just kind of mad that, like, you know, I, I could have been doing it the whole time. What was your What was your sophomore season like? You won a team MVP as a sophomore. That yeah, so... Yeah, so I, uh, I mean, first game I played, we played Dedham. And, you know, I had three touchdowns and... Uh, I, th- I think I uh, I had like 136 receiving yards or something like yeah. that. So I mean, you know, I, from the first game, you know, I kind of you know excelled. Right, and what? So were they were having you play wide receiver at that point. Yeah, so I played. I Is played that like, what you played at uh, Milton Academy? Yeah, so I I played the same position my sophomore year as I did my junior and senior year at Milton. Okay. Um, Did you get? I was always curious about this because, like, at the the game versus uh, Governor's Academy, you had four touchdowns. I had three. Really? Yeah, okay. I, I read something that said four. Okay. Uh, okay. I just three. just three. Sorry yeah. to oversell you, but three touchdowns. You're you know accrued a lot of uh, total yardage. Did you get any looks where coaches were saying, "Hey, can we get you for offense as well?" I mean, I've seen um, maybe, I mean, some schools were saying. I mean, not really, to be honest. Like, uh, I mean, I had like a short list of schools that you know were recruiting me mm-hmm. um, because like I kind of knew what I wanted. I wanted that high academic, high high football level yes. um, school. So I mean, you it's know, basically the Ivy League. It's or like the, it, was, it was like the, no, I I I knew I was I could go Ivy. I knew I could play you know Ivy League football. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the only thing was I didn't know if I could go Power Five and like. You know, if I got hurt or anything like that, like, um, it's making me sound so off. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's just like something to fall back on. Like, you know, like, you know, you're, you're going to hang up your cleats eventually. Um, so it's like just important to be like real with yourself that like, you know, if this doesn't work out for me, I mean, like by any means, like I love football, like it's awesome. You know, like I, I owe it the world for, you know, opening, like it, it's opened so many doors for me. Um, but like, I don't know, like that Power Five, um, like that school, like and sort of environment, yeah. That like aura, like that that total vibe. I think it's a little more more intense. Yes. Um. So I mean, they they have like a week, Memorial Day that week. They got that week off, and then maybe like a week in like the middle of July. But for the most part, they they've been there working out like four or five times a week. All year. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a year-round commitment in there. They don't go home for hol- holidays, you know, Christmas. They don't get that. Really? Thanksgiving, they're there. Yeah, so... Uh, What's crazy, too, is... And I'm not I'm not an expert on this by any means. And I don't know you as, as well as many other people know you as, as a player. But if you had taken the Michigan um, walk-on slot, presumably there's a chance you wouldn't have been able to play at Michigan. Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, that. I mean, that's the case for everyone. Uh, right. Just because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, how do you compare, you know, ISL versus some stud league in Ohio versus some kid that's coming out of Florida or California? You know, the level of competition. You know, you could have gone there, and someone at your position could have just been rock solid. Uh, yeah, I mean, I maybe mean, that's not your mindset. It's, de- it's definitely no. It's definitely the case for I mean any school. I mean, like. You know, like every year they reshuffle the deck. And, you know, they they get to choose which guys they want, and which guys they don't. Um, the funny way of putting it, reshuffle the deck. You know, it's 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 kind of you know it's a little scary if you ask me. You know, like like if you miss a day, like it feels like you've been gone for a year, that type of thing. Really. You know, you got to go in. You know, clock in. You know, put your time in. You know, do what you got to do. You know, like like you, you can't cheat the grind. So I mean can't really go you got to go through it every time yeah what are you benching and squatting right now uh best ever uh best ever i mean i 
I mean, I have a really... I'd say right now, um, if I were to bench, I could probably do like 335 Jeez. without my back coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if you're like... So, like, I don't know. When, when, you, when you bench, like... You can sort of like you know bring your hips up and sort of like make the make the bar go go up when it's not really your chest doing it. It's kind of just yeah. like your hips like throwing up, you yes. know, trying to get it on the thing. So like probably right now like three thirty, three thirty five for a flat bench. Flat bench, yeah. So I mean, just all chest and then squat. I've never actually max squatted. Um, most I've ever done is around like five forty. Jeez. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I try You're not... You're strong with some of the linemen, it sounds like. I'm not trying to... I mean, so, I'm like a pound-for-pound pound kid. Um, so, like, at Milton, we were measured pound-for-pound. Pound yeah. And, like, our how much we could lift and stuff like that, you know, and our weight. So, I won that there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm definitely... I hope to be at the top, top of the food chain at uh, Harvard, too. Yeah. Um, as far as, you know, the pound-for-pound pound thing. Because, uh, you know, I, I kind of take pride in that. Because, like... You been lifting a while? Um, so, I mean, like sophomore year, I really started trying to lift. Um, I mean, I uh, I had a knee surgery in sophomore year, actually. Wow. Um, so I my my me and my brother, my brother and I, um, we uh, we've had a history of osteochondritis discans, OCD of the knee, if you want to call it. <laughs> um, so I mean I don't know. Hopefully other Ivy League schools aren't looking at this, watching this video. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna tell you which one it I is. I assure you, no one is watching this video. Um, we probably have like a hundred people, maybe. All right, but uh, yeah, just to uh, you know, sort of conceal that. Um, so essentially, they just had to drill screws into my knee bone because it was chipping off from Jesus. overuse and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, like it was a. Uh, you know, I do like the whole PT thing, like uh, you know, rehab for like six months or whatever it was. Wow! So that was before my junior year. Were you ever worried that college coaches would hear that? Hear about um, that? I mean, not really. I'm. I mean, like they see what they get. You know, like I wasn't trying to like, you know, slip it under the rug or anything like that. You know, I was kind of open. You know, yes. sort of. You know. Just being as honest as possible yeah um because i mean it's better for better for you better for them like it's just i don't know just it just goes better that way yeah you know yeah are you so yeah is everyone in your family as big as you um so my brother we're 16 months 16 months apart sorry um and i'd say he's around like 210 right now he's like six foot as well six one six foot um so i mean yeah like uh, Does he play? No, he so he he's the one who had uh, he had like five or six knee surgeries. Oh wow! Yeah, so he had it bad on, on both knees. So I only had it on one, but he had it on both. Like, and then like the screws they put in were dissolvable, and then uh, like the ones that he put in, like when he was starting to rehab, like his knee bone just like shot through him because like it's like so strong, like just like essentially just like you know yeah plucked and plucked the screws out. So they had to go back in clean it clean his knee out all again and then you know put like a more heavy duty wow. like uh like grades uh like screws in back into his knee so i mean he's been sidelined like he didn't get to play high school sports he's kind of that sucks yeah so he didn't really you know get an opportunity so mm-hmm. that's why uh i don't know i'm a little bit more cautious about you know sort of what other activities i partake in yeah. um you know sort of just try to stay as healthy as possible yeah he- Will you will you ever play like pick up at the police station or? Not? Oh yeah, I've uh, definitely played. Okay. Like, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, the DS kids take over that spot a lot. Uh, we're always, we're always we, over there. Yeah, every now and then I've seen Ronaldo over there a few times. Which one? Uh, Luke. Okay, yeah, yeah, he was on the podcast like two days ago. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah. I coached his older brother Nick to track. Oh really? You know him? Yeah, I do. I know He's both a stud. of them. Yeah, he broke uh, this hundred meter and long jump record at DS. Oh, and really? He started playing football his senior year. He played in like seventh grade or whatever, but um, he was a really good linebacker, really good running back, and then uh, basketball. I think he was the team MVP. So he's, you know, yeah. Definitely. Probably one of the best athletes in the whole. Definitely, tribe. yeah, definitely has yeah, some good athletes in that family. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I don't think I ever got to play Nick. 
I mean, we didn't, I don't think we cross over. Yeah, it's weird. he's all. got like the same build as you too. Yeah, he. Uh, I was. I was gonna say like he's got a pretty uh, similar stature to me. Mm-hmm. I was. Uh, I saw him at the gym the other day. For, uh, Kingsbury Club, uh, yeah. Medfield. So he would know you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, ju- I introduced myself to him the last time I saw him. Yeah. Um, I saw him, like, you know, maybe once or twice before that. Right. But Tell people what your schedule is like. You were telling me right before we started, it sounds pretty brutal. You're up at 5.30? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's, like, the, you know, the earliest if I get up after the first news. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, like... Probably have to like leave my so today I was a little scared. Coach kind of told me a break today. I uh, left my house at 5:50, and uh, usually it takes me 30 minutes on the dot um, to get there to get into Cambridge from Medfield. Mm. Um, but today for some reason I was you know I was pulling into the stadium at like 6:29. You know, wow. grab all my stuff like my cleats and everything. And, you know, they're like already starting. You know, yeah. they they don't. They're not like holding back, you know. I literally walked in the gates and I looked at my watch, six thirty. So I was just like, "Yeah, coach, like you can't, like you can't get mad at me for like you know showing up on time." <laughs> like it's like, so. Yeah. I mean, we have this thing called Harvard Football Time. I don't know if um, anyone's yeah. talked to you about that, but like we gotta show up like fifteen or twenty minutes early to the actual said time. Uh, so if they say six thirty, it really means it's like I mean like I I I cut it close today. I mean I definitely. Should have. So the punishment for being late is you have to do a hundred uh, Turkish get-ups. Um, oh. I think I think they're Turkish. They might be Russian. Um, <laughs> but uh, so you essentially have like a forty-five pound plate, and you know, like you'll lay down with your, uh, you know, just like on your back, and you know, like your the plates on your chest, and you essentially just have to get up and lift the plate above your head, and uh, you know that's wow. one rep. So you can't like take like your hand off the plate ever essentially you have to like hug it when you lay down you gotta take a break so um yeah I think did you have to do that today or no uh, no right? I got I got lucky uh, okay uh, I did that had to do that in the fall um yeah it was yeah, I, then you then you then you do like the, the workout afterwards Ooh. so that's <laughs> like that's like the start of your workout so I mean just don't be late <laughs> that's, yeah, right. just, that's just what it teaches you so yeah, you get in, you know, hopefully earlier than six thirty, maybe like six fifteen or six ten. Yeah, so for I, the lift, and then lift goes how long? Is it a lift or is it? Uh, it's is it? it's like conditioning and lifting, um, and then you know like six thirty, like that's the start time for the later group. So the early group starts at five thirty. Oh my goodness! So is this the guys that got work? Uh, the guys who like, got. How do you get sorted into the five thirty? Uh, it's. Like totally like elective like you know guys. Guys want to go at five thirty. Oh yeah. Um, Dang. They're uh, getting after it. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, it's so they so what they'll do is the five thirty group will go in. They'll lift in the morning. They'll lift first, and then the six thirty group will will get there. They'll finish their lift. They'll meet us on the field, and then we'll do like the conditioning part. And then the six thirty guys go in the lift after we're done with that part. So we do like a warm up, whatever, um, and then depending on what the what the day is or what we're like focusing on. How many days a week do you do this? Uh, so I do it Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm and I'm in the late group, but uh, I mean late is not that late. Yeah. Um, so I mean after that, um, I've been painting this summer, um, so I I mean like I'll work from like. Nine galleries or houses? Um, for essentially, like, uh, my friend and I, a good friend of mine, um, he, his dad owns a bunch of, uh, you know, retirement homes, assisted mm-hmm. living care homes mm-hmm. is like the, like, you know, the, you know, the, the proper name for yes, it. Yes, yes. Um, so, you know, like when people pass and, you know, their belongings are still in the room and, mm-hmm. You know, like you got to get your stuff out, and like um, we go in, you know, we take the furniture, help the families move out, you know, sort of um, try to be kind of sad. Try to, yeah, it's, de- uh, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely given given me some some wisdom. Um, oh, you know, yeah. seeing a lot of these, you know, troopers, you know, sort of, you know. What does it tell you about life? Do you think? Uh, I mean, 
it's definitely like you don't want to like take anything for granted you don't really know how good you have it until you know someone takes it from you mm-hmm. um so that's probably one thing another thing is just like you know you don't want to waste any days because you know like these are the, these are the best days so like those those guys those those people are you know kind of going through it right now so yeah what's, uh, what's the biggest misconception about Mitchell Gonzer? biggest misconception uh i mean i don't really know if there's like a, a big misconception i don't really know what like the word on the street is i don't really know how people view me or anything like that right. but i mean to be honest like i'm not really like into like the sort of the noise stuff like that yeah um i mean it's kind of stay in my lane mm-hmm. you know do me um and yeah i mean that's really all you can do in life is yeah. uh you know, try to be the best person you can. You know, it takes nothing to be kind. Um, and sort of, you know, try to give back later on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, like, I'm not really sure if there is, you know, yeah. a, a big misconception about me. What do you think the biggest misconception about Harvard is? I'm going to Harvard. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you had your own ideas in your head about what Harvard would be like. Mm. Okay, so... Um... So I, I mean, so like it was a little different for me. Like I, I did classes uh, last fall, and you know it was like majority like all freshmen, and uh, you know like we had to like root, live in our our dorm or whatever. Um, we couldn't really see anyone. Um, mm-hmm. We weren't allowed in anyone else's rooms, so I haven't really got like the yeah. the full scope of things. But to be honest, I'd say the biggest misconception about Harvard is. Um, I don't. I mean, it's kind. Of, it's kind of, It's just like it's sort of just like the mantra that comes with it. Um, you know, like <laughs> we're just kind of like sort of glorified nerds, if you will. <laughs> um, but I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think it get, like anyone there, you know, goes about it like that. You know. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of like it's a little bit difficult to sort of like talk about school like. T- and then like um like talk to somebody who's not really like affiliated around it because like uh, it's kind of like it's pretty like a tight-knit uh Mm. community right um so i'd say you know biggest misconception like i don't know i would just say like just i don't know have a conversation with a harvard student and uh you know i'll probably change your life is is my my sort of thing um and definitely like you know like I don't know. That's that's what I would say. Yeah. What was the coolest class you got to take? Uh, at school so far. Yeah. Um, so I took a class on sleep. Um, and was this taught by uh, Seisler? Yeah, Charles Seisler. Charles Seisler. Uh huh. Uh, yes, sir. His son Mark is uh, coming on the podcast. Uh, really? And yeah, sometime in August because he played Harvard football. I don't know. Did you know that? Did not. So Doctor Seisler's son played Harvard football. Um, for a bit, I don't think he played all four years, but he was like a backup quarterback. And he's a DS guy, nice. and um, and then now he actually has won a bunch of awards. Yeah, oh, yeah. and he's like this brilliant scientist. So yeah. we'll get him on soon. But yeah, did you know Doctor Sazer was a, a Dover Sherman guy or what? I did not. I uh, yeah, dude, he lives down the street. That's crazy. Um, because I mean that's where he's probably doing all of his you know w- w- webinars. Um, oh. so Tuesday and Thursdays we have. Um, like, cause this is a, like a general education class. I'm pretty sure it's like similar or like the same, I don't know, uh, for other general education classes at Harvard. But, uh, yeah, so Sizer was like my sleep professor. Yeah. Um, he taught a class or did webinars Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then on Friday we'd have like, you know, like a, a section class. Um, but it, it depended on the day and your, mm-hmm. your section on when you'd have it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, the class I, in Sleep, Sleep Well 1 was the class, and, you know, I'm so thankful that I took that class. Yeah. I really learned a lot. Um, I mean... You've been able to apply it to your own so, life? So, right, yeah, so I was just about to drop a fact. Um, okay, yeah, so, sorry, go, sorry, go. Uh, so, I mean, according to this study I was reading, I, t- I honestly cannot name... Like, I, I, we, uh, we learned about so many different studies this, this past year, you know, it was, like, I don't know, it was just an awesome class. Uh, there's really just a lot to unpack, but I think the one of the biggest things that stood out to me uh, from uh, the fall and you know sleep one on one 
was uh, this fact that you know the lowest mortality rate of humans and um, how many hours of sleep they get every night, like you know their average yeah. like sleep amount, the lowest you know mor- uh, mortality rate. Yeah. is seven and a half hours wow yeah it's 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 weird i uh so you, i was gonna i thought you were gonna say a huge number too so it's no. that's there's a you don't want to be getting too much sleep no so yeah so i mean like back to like the misconception you know like topic um you know a lot of a lot of information about sleep is you know there's a lot of misinformation about yeah sleep out there so um yeah, so I mean, seven and a half is like that sort of golden number for that particular study. I don't know why, yeah. but it was just interesting that that stood out um, the way it did. Yeah, it, based on what you remember from the class, um, and I think isn't Dr. Sanzo, he's basically like one of a hand, maybe one or two foremost sleep experts in the world. Is that right? Yeah, no, you're uh, you're definitely right. Uh, you know, the the government hasn't really given the proper attention that you know sleep research sort of needs to you know keep going and keep discovering new you know new concepts and new information and stuff like that because you know know, the world's constantly evolving so yeah like it's you know it's important to keep up to date but like you know once again like the government they haven't really you know given it the proper spotlight it deserves right um because there's a lot that goes into it is it seven to nine for our age group? Maybe that's misinformation. Um, that's what no, I no. So seven yes, to nine. seven to nine. Um, I mean, but the the one thing that I learned that really another thing that I that stood out is you know everyone's different. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know like your body's different than mine. You know like everyone's body works a little differently. Yeah. Um, so I mean, if you you can do seven hours of sleep then do seven hours of sleep yeah um and you know you feel fine in the morning you're not you know trying to go back to bed or anything like that um but if i feel great with eight yes when i have eight you know i'm just like yeah perfect. so it it really depends on the person what um, do you do what do you like to get uh especially when you're waking up so early so I like to be in bed by like nine fifteen, nine thirty. Damn, dude. Yeah, so I'm I'm you're an dialed, man. You're focused on I'm an elementary school kid. Yeah. Um you're, dude, you're focused and getting your goals down and stuff like that. It's yeah. No so uh yeah, I try to shoot for nine hours. Um Ah, okay. But you know, like uh you know, like I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's always things popping up. Um I still gotta fill up my, my housing information for next, this upcoming year and stuff like that so just like little things um Wait, like that'll that. keep you up later because you do yeah, work yeah. Mm-hmm. okay yeah um i mean for the most part yeah i try to shoot for like nine hours of sleep yeah because if you go to bed yeah if you go to bed at nine you wake up at six that's nine hours right yeah but I don't wake up at six, so I I say I want to get nine hours, but like I usually just get like eight and a half, eight around okay. there. That's not terrible, is it? No, I mean, you know, once again, like everyone's different. Um, I mean, I think it, it's kind of crazy to juxtapose that there's a lot of kids around this summer in Dover, Sherman, and Medfield that wake up like, stupid late. Like I woke up at like eleven today. Oh like, really? Yeah, like super. And that's the, what's weird about me is, and my family always makes fun of me because, like, oh, you're so lazy, you're waking up late. I, when I'm at school and I'm independent I'm not, and I'm on my own, you're night I night. always wake up, no, I always wake up at like 7, dude. Oh, uh, really? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to bed at like um, 11, wake up at 7, like I'm super regimented. But then when I'm at home, like I was coaching track at DS, and now I'm just doing podcasts. Like when I know I have a podcast at 1 o'clock, I don't wake up. Like that, but I, mean, I should wake up. I could should keep waking up at like seven. It would be better for me if I kept doing it like that. I mean, yeah. So like once again, another thing I talked about was just having a consistent schedule. Um, you know, sort of trying to go to bed at the same time every night and try to wake up at, at in the morning every night or every morning. Um, and then, yeah, like um, as far as like you know circadian rhythm goes, like you know, like back in the day, like when you didn't have like. You know, cell phones and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Social media to keep you up late at night. You know, to like scroll through TikTok or something late night. Yeah. Um. You know, that's. I think that's definitely like, you know, sort of just like ran through our culture and society. Yeah. Um. So, so you work. You know, you get up early. You go to 
Harvard Stadium, you worked out. The Coliseum, baby. The Coliseum. Yeah, it's sick. I Like I mentioned you earlier, my dad played at Harvard. Mm-hmm, yeah. So I go to the game every year. Oh, yeah. Um, one great story is one year, I don't know if I was like six and my brother was four. Mm-hmm. It was a really muddy day, and we're at the game, tailgating, whatever. And me and my brother, we started fighting, right, like for fun. We were just wrestling, and it got like more and more intense. And eventually we were in this mud pit. And we're covered in mud, head to toe. We're putting each other's face in the mud. And all of a sudden, this group of Harvard and Yale students just circle around us, like a hundred of them. And they're screaming and they're cheering. And we finish and we finally are done. And then these people, they kept, they come up and they each give us a dollar and stuff like that. And, we're, and I was like, at the time, I didn't understand it. I was like, oh, why are they, why do they care? Why do they, what? But now I'm like, that's hilarious. Like these drunk college students were like, look at these two little kids slamming each other in the mud. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Tailgates go crazy. Um, I mean, I'm sure your dad, every time he goes back, like, he's like, wow, like, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, did you ever get to, have you been to the game yet? Yeah, I have. Um, like growing up, did you ever go? Or uh, I, I went a few times when I was younger. Um, I mean, yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go every year. It'd be like a special occasion or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't go when it was at the Yale Bowl. Only when no, it was at yeah. The yeah. My, my most recent... Um, like the game uh, was when I was at Fenway uh, mm-hmm. three years ago. As a recruit? Um, no, so I went with my uh, good friends from Milton. Mm-hmm. Um, and the kid who brought me, um, he he actually goes to Yale now. No way. <laughs> yeah. So and actually, two you two play. no. So two of the kids who actually I went with, um, they both go to Yale now. So it's, it was it's pretty cool to uh, you know sort of be there firsthand. I saw a great video. Um, it was from two thousand five. Where these I don't know if you saw this, but these Yale students they put on these shirts that said Harvard Pep Squad, and they carried all these signs and they mapped out like the seating at Harvard Stadium and they handed out these cards that were like red and white, and they made the Harvard fans fans sell, uh, spell out we suck. It was wow, funny. that's. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I, I root for Harvard. Once but again, I thought that was pretty funny. Once again, that is a, a game within a game. Uh, kudos to them for uh, coming up with that cl- <laughs> clever seating arrangement. Um, you know, there's definitely uh, some smart people at, at school. Yeah, uh, right. For sure. Funniest thing I saw at the game was uh, after scoring a touchdown, the Harvard kids started chanting "Safety School." Yeah, um, it's uh, it's it's kind of a it's a cutthroat uh, social scene, yeah. um, and sort of you know like like student section and environment. Um, you just gotta love like the bad blood between yeah. you know the oldest rivalry. Did you ever consider other Ivies? Um, so Cornell was actually the first school to um, offer me, mm-hmm. and uh, I was I was pretty hesitant about going. To school in upstate New York, you know, I knew yeah. that I knew that the the winters were gonna be long, you know, like. And you probably have to be there for in the summer a lot. Right? Yeah, like so I already knew that, like, you know, I wasn't really trying to spend like, like, <laughs> like November and it's like yeah, snow's already on the ground. And yeah, like, you know, there goes Canada weather. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I mean, and also the fact that it was you know really far away from my house, um, but. And then Brown was the only other IV that offered me. Um, but they, yeah, I mean, they were, I mean, I, I definitely had fun at Brown, like, um, no hard feelings between them. Oh, um, for like a recruiting trip? Yeah. Um, a, overnight? Official visit, yeah. Okay. So I was there for a weekend. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was definitely, you know, all the, all the IVs are awesome. Like, they, did they, they take you out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun night to say yeah, the we least. Can leave, we, yeah, we can leave it yeah, at that. Yeah, I, de- get, but I was curious. Yeah, details aside, uh, <laughs> it was a, definitely a fun night. That was, uh, so I'm transferring to NC State, but I did track at Stonehill College for two years, mm-hmm. and that was always the big thing, was recruits would come and, you know, show them a good time, essentially. Yeah, so um, Scott Elliott um, from Holliston, a teammate of mine, yeah, he uh, he was actually my host. No um, way. He's about as nice as they come. Oh, they don't, they don't make him like they used to. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I could go, I could, you know, 
keep talking for an hour on how, how great of a guy Scott is. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to being teammates with him. He was another guy. I think I, I don't know. Now it's a blur because we've been talking for a while. I think we talked about this before the podcast about yeah, we did. how me and you were both up a year originally. We played with the fifth graders when we were in yeah. fourth grade for football because we were heavier. Um, but I remember Scott was too big. Like he, he was gonna have to play up like two, two years, years or something. Yeah. And so you know his parents were like, that sounds dangerous because naturally these kids are older, man. Yeah, I mean, two, two years, two, two three years. years. Yeah, and then he, so man, he had to sit out, but then he came back and he was a beast. Yeah. And that's the thing I talked to Spencer Cassell as well. Uh, he wasn't allowed to play eighth grade football. I just think it's kind of a silly rule the way in Pop Warner if you're. Um, if you're like a certain size that you have to sit out like an 8th grader like that sucks man because those kids like like when we were playing Walpole versus DS I mean you're getting ready for high school football next year you should be able to hit a big kid you know um, yeah I mean I don't I, I mean like <laughs> it's uh, you know like every, like we're not the ones with the power you know what I'm saying like yeah, we, uh, could be. Yeah, we could be yeah I mean I mean, uh, maybe we start a youth football. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're gonna need some money. Like, uh, well, you're painting, and I'm doing this podcast. Yeah, so I mean, we, we can, can we, yeah, we could scrape together some, some, uh, some funds towards go, uniforms. Go under the cushions, see if we can find any change. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll, uh, we'll definitely uh, figure something out. Oh, this, but, yeah, this is a good question actually. Yeah. NCAA athletes can make money now. Yeah. Are you gonna capitalize on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of just, you know. You know, like I, I could Venmo you a dollar to come on a podcast. That would be the first money. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. You know, like the it's whole like, the whole Mr. Krabs like lucky first dollar thing. That whole SpongeBob episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I Mr. mean, Mr. Krabs is more like the NCAA. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's definitely a penny pitcher. Um, and uh, you know, so is so is the NCAA. Um, but. I mean, like it's it's cool. Um, it's definitely. I mean, it's just it, what 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 boggles my mind is like, you know, like we've seen like the Trevor Lawrences and we've seen the Johnny Manzels, the Reggie Bushes, the Robert Griffin the yeah. Thirds. You know, like these are like staples and like you know the NCAA College Hall of Fame, and you know, I it's amazing that those guys never got to reap the benefits that they actually deserved. Yeah. Well, Manziel um, did, but then he got punished. So. Yeah. But that, <laughs> that type of stuff, yeah. like, uh, I mean, like, who knows how much, how much money, millions, how millions. much Manziel would have, you know, would have done. I like, know. Someone, and someone that too, like, if this kid blows out his knee the first year playing pro sports, or even in college, like how many guys have gotten hurt or, or uh, they just, were, yeah. Once like, again, that's that no backup plan yeah, that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's either you make it or you you, you break it, and that's sort of I don't know the the name of the game. Yeah. So, have, have you, has anyone reached out to you about sponsoring you? Have you um, reaching out to any brands, clothing? Uh, I mean, I so I tried uh, reaching out to Lululemon, uh, <laughs> try try to get like a little deal with them. But uh, you know, nothing worked out. They like got it got back to me, so that like they, they weren't weren't interested. Um, been really? trying to reach reach out to like candy companies or something like small like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, nothing, uh, nothing serious. Dang. So. I mean, um, definitely got any of your teammates. You know, got any sponsorships? Um, as of now, like uh, there's, I mean, I don't know if you know Caleb Woodall. Um. Uh, He's gonna be an incoming freshman in the fall, um, but he's already—I mean, he's already like TikTok famous or whatever. <laughs> um, so I've never downloaded TikTok or anything like that. Um, so like, I don't really know like what he just—he's—he uh, got like famous because like uh, he was in like the locker room with his high school team and like was singing like some Justin Bieber, um, and like the video blew up. Um, and yeah, like he—I I don't know how much money he's made off of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, besides him though, I don't think there's any other Harvard guys that have yeah. gotten a deal. Hey, I've seen a lot of barstool athletes. Mm-hmm. I wonder how legit it is though, because you're giving them this free sponsorship, and hey, good for barstool. They've got thousands, like thousands of athletes. So I'm not knocking them, but I'm wondering to the kids, like they're basically getting a free T-shirt. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, cool. You could say you're part of barstool, but you yeah. know, I it's just like a name. Yeah. Um, every title, if you will. 
Um, I mean, I don't know. I uh, it, w- the thing with me is like, um, like it would be cool to be a Barcelona athlete. Like I'm not knocking it or anything like that. But like, if you're not like one of the first ones, you're not like that part of like that OG group. Yeah. Then it's kind of like. Eh, you kind so of have you thought th- about Barstool or no? Um, I mean, yeah, definitely giving it some thought. I mean, it's just kind of like a win-win situation. You just get free stuff to give them. Yeah. You know, your sort of your credentials, like, who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna like you know go through with it. Yeah. Do you have aspirations for after college of a particular field? I think you're you're an economics major. Is that right? Uh yeah. I mean, I, I mean that's not set in stone. Um, I, uh, you know, I, there's, there's a lot of, you know, roads you can go. I'd like to be an entrepreneur. Um, I mean, being your own boss is kind of the coolest thing yeah. in my opinion. Um, and I mean, honestly, yeah, nothing specific. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I c- couldn't, couldn't, uh, the great connections I think coming out of Harvard football. It's like, I know I just from my dad's friends, like a lot of them ended up being successful businessmen in their own right, you know? Mm-hmm. And it makes sense if you're the dude, you know, you got, you're in the third band and you're getting up at, you're getting up at 5 a.m. to go pump iron and work your ass off and, you know, do stuff like that, that, you know, that, that hard work will, will eventually pay dividends, you know? Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I mean, you just gotta love the process. Um, do you ever, do you ever consider... Maybe you could play in the NFL. There's been about 12 Harvard, 12 Harvard guys in the NFL right now. I mean, I'm honestly just trying to take it a day at the time, day at a time. Um, I mean, like football is a dangerous game. Uh, yeah. You're, 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 you know, you're playing with fire every time you step on that field. So. Yeah. Um, See, most people know that they're not going to play in the NFL when someone like you runs them over in seventh or eighth grade. You say, okay, well, I'm not going to play in the NFL. Wall pulls you rolled over us yeah. but you that's weird because you're playing division one football so presumably there's a chance of that yeah i mean i mean not gonna count anything out um but yeah once again just gotta take it one day at a time yeah and uh, backup plans too like you said yeah so i mean that was sort of i mean that was probably the biggest thing about choosing harvard over any other school and like the fact that it's close but i mean yeah sort of just like the mm-hmm. the gates the doors all of the possible, you know, routes you can go How do you afterwards. How about going from safety to outside linebacker? Um, I mean, I definitely love free safety. Um, I I only got to play it for one year, but I mean, I, honestly, just whatever the team needs. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the sentiment I got from Spencer moving from tight end to left tackle. He's like, I just want to see the field, basically. Yeah. I mean, sounds about right. I mean, do you think you'll have a chance to start? Uh, I mean, maybe more special teams for this upcoming season. Uh, my my goal. I mean, like I got I got a lot of goals. Like, yeah, right. Um, but I mean, personally, I mean, one that I could sort of give to you now is to sort of make the travel team for the first game. Oh yeah. Um. And yeah, I mean, we'll see where we go from there, but yeah. everything that I'm doing now is sort of just like leading up to that moment. So how many guys in the roster? Um, so, I mean, I think we have like anywhere from like 110, like 120-ish. Jeez. Yeah. And how many get to travel? Uh, I'm thinking like 55, 60. So it's highly competitive. It's like half, half of... Half the guys that yeah. are already studs. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's crazy. And then it's what's one nice thing is you guys have your starting quarterback coming back, right? Even though it's been two years. Who's this, Jake? Uh, Smith. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think he's uh, he hasn't been at uh at workouts, but uh, oh, yeah. I don't I don't know where he's training or mm-hmm. um you know planning on doing or yeah. you know what his what his deal is. But. Do, you get to, do you know any of the older guys? Because I know, you, like you said, it was kind of the freshman. Last, last um, I mean, aside from my visit, not really. Wow. Yeah, so it's kind of... Is that weird at all? I mean, right now, like, it's it's awesome, you know, being... I lo- so, like, back in high school, like, I honestly love being an underclassman. Because, like, I feel like, um, like, you're just like an underdog... You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you just get, like, that chip on your shoulder immediately. Mm-hmm. So, like, like 
I don't know, people don't really expect much from you. And then, like, um, when you start exceeding expectations and, you know, people start turning their heads, um, I think that's the type of re- yeah. recognition that I aspire for. Um, definitely being that underclassman, you know, being counted out, not even, like, in the conversation. And then, you, you know, like, you start, you know, playing well and, mm-hmm. you know, making an impact and, you know, just, yeah, that's, like, the coolest thing in my mind. Yeah. Do they, I think they used to back many moons ago have like a freshman yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but now it's just a varsity it's probably when your dad was there um, yeah right um i think you might have played freshman football or something yeah like so uh definitely um i don't know when they stopped doing that i think it was 90s the 90s that uh they stopped doing that but uh yeah i mean then we're all one now so yeah um yeah well, why do you like the town as a movie? Uh, the, the town, I mean, there's a lot of action. Um, ben Affleck's in it. Um, I mean, I don't know, it's a good overall movie. Yeah. Um, I actually, my roommate and I watched it. Um, so my roommate, Who's your roommate? My roommate, so I have, I'm going to have five roommates. But, uh, oh, football guys? No, no, so. It's just random. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, no. So, we. It was kind of weird. We met through like the interweb, um, sort of, kind of, and then like <laughs> off of like other people. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was a combination of a lot of those things. Um, but so my roommate and I, who he went to Phillips Andover, but he's originally from Hong Kong. Wow. Um, so he lived down the hall from me for a semester. Um, I like Friday afternoon, like uh, after like a long week. Um, we, uh, you know, sat down on, like, a rainy Friday or something like that, and, uh, you know, we walked the to town together, and it was just cool, because, like, you know, I'm, like, you know, yeah. you know, a Boston suburb kid, essentially, and, yeah. like, you know, here I am watching, like, the town, you know, I've seen you're it probably at, a million times. You're at Harvard, And yeah. I'm, at, I'm at Harvard, you know, <laughs> like, it's, like, uh, you know, it's, like, it's crazy, like, and then, like, I'm just watching it with this kid from Hong Kong, like, it, it just, like, blows my mind. Yeah, do you ever feel... And this is a, and I, you know, I want to leave this open ended, not like you should feel one way or the other, because the way, yeah, basically the question would be, do you ever feel a bit of imposter syndrome, like, wow, I can't believe I'm at Harvard and playing Harvard football? And Spencer said that he felt maybe like he had worked hard and earned it, so that there wasn't that feeling, but that also maybe there could be a sense of that, um, the grandiose, you know, yeah. Grandioseness of I mean, out. so. That's like a, a big psychology thing. So I took AP Psych in jun- mm-hmm. junior year. Um, so I, like I really like that class. Like yeah. it's sort of like um, they sort of gave me a lot of perspective about how you know everyone's 